Chodnowski. Finding freedom. Finding freedom. Leonovsky. Have you ever been locked up in prison? I have. Three years ago, on a cold, rainy November Sunday, I found myself inside Monroe Correctional Complex, a state prison just 20 miles north of here. But as the prison doors slammed behind me, those 20 miles might as well have been a million. Mr. Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests and honored judges. I can already see what you're thinking. You're thinking, him? Criminal? He doesn't look like a criminal. <laughs> and you are clearly thinking, I knew it. <laughs> Leo was always up to no good. I was at Monroe Correctional Facility as a guest, luckily, of Twin Speaks Toastmasters, one of four Toastmasters clubs behind bars. Sponsored and supported by Prison Voices Count, a small nonprofit that has been co sponsored by leaders in this room. This organization for the last 10 years has been funding and supporting growth of these Toastmasters clubs. All of them are in the top three in our district for years, and I wanted to know why. Personally, I thought it was because it was really. Fight Club of Toastmasters. <laughs> Going across the prison yard with the unsmiling guard, being watched from a watchtower and a razor wire all around me, I almost lost my breakfast. I have never been arrested. I don't even know anyone who has been in prison. And here I was in actual prison. Then. Standing in the meeting room, through the window, I saw a lineup of 40 men of every age and all in khakis waiting to come through after a mandatory pat down. A mandatory pat down. Can you imagine your Toastmasters meeting started with a <laughs> mandatory pat down? One by one, these men streamed through into the room, and I was shaking hands till finally coming to Jacob Smith, or as his friends call him, John Jacob Jingleberry Smith. <laughs> Welcome to Toastmasters, he said, with excitement that I did not expect. I am so glad you're here. You being here means the world to us. Now, this is not something that you have done before, have you? Uh, no, I said, feeling not unlike people who come to Toastmasters for the first time. Well, don't worry, he said, we don't bite. <laughs> the meeting started, and it was like any other Toastmaster meeting, <laughs> for the most part. What surprised me was the role that Toastmasters seemed to play in these inmates' lives. Yusuf, a tall African-American Muslim man, said that Toastmasters means hope to him because it allows the best of people to come through even in the worst of circumstances. Spencer, a young, ambitious, charismatic 20-year-old, said that for him, Toastmasters has given them an opportunity to be forgiven and forgive others, becoming a better friend, brother, son. But it was Jacob's story that stuck with me the most. During the break, I asked him, what has Toastmasters done for you? And he turned to me with tears in his eyes. He said, I am in prison because I robbed banks. And when I did that, I was so full of hate, full of racism and bigotry, that I didn't care who I hurt. But Toastmasters has filled the pit of despair in my heart. I know that people care about me, and I care about them too. Coming to Toastmasters, he told me, 
reminds me that my voice counts. And, he said more sheepishly, I really like the applause. <laughs> I know that there are people in this room who believe that just because these men have committed heinous crimes, they do not deserve opportunities to grow. They do not deserve Toastmasters. Even worse, Toastmasters with these amazing tools might make them super criminals. I know I believe that. But in three years that I have been going to prison, I have seen those beliefs overturned. Toastmasters and programs like Toastmasters are actually shown to decrease the recidivism rate, the rate of coming back to prison, by over 90%. Simply because it gives people opportunity to believe in themselves. And I have seen that firsthand. I have seen people like Joseph and Yusuf, the most unlikely of pairs, come up with outreach programs to help inmates re-enter the community. And Spencer, huh, Spencer has asked me to create a whole curriculum called Restart Up Academy to help inmates come up with tools to start their own businesses. Those men are using their voices to change the world. And even though they are still behind bars, I see them finding their freedom. I find it ironic that I had to go to prison to find freedom. <laughs> and it doesn't come without its own problems. No, not the mandatory pat downs. But my four-year-old son constantly tells people that his father is in prison. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and then proudly adds, and when I grow up, I want to go to prison too. <laughs> My fellow Toastmasters, my friends, we live in a very complicated world and a very challenging times. And it's so easy to get paralyzed by fear, to get handcuffed by anger, and to get imprisoned by blame, shame, and finger pointing. But if those men behind bars can find their prison voices and can make them count and can find their freedom, so can I. So can you. It is time for you to have your voices count and find your freedom. Mr. Toastmaster.